Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Welcome to this brand new series. This is a very exciting course that will teach you the basics of preparing year-end accounts. The course is going to be very extensive and will guide you through the whole process from beginning to end. It's ideal for so many people, bookkeepers, accountants, business owners, and the list goes on. The course is also ideal for sole traders, limited companies, and other entities which need to prepare financial statements. Let's jump right in. What to expect from this course? There's actually two slides here, and I've crammed in this list. As mentioned, this course is very extensive. There's a lot for us to go through. I don't want to put you off. I'll try and make this as fun as possible. I will be brief but detailed. I'm here to help you along the way. If you have questions, this video is on YouTube, so you can re-watch the content if you get confused at any point. But there is a lot for us to go through. And this is prob probably the longest course that I've ever done and perhaps will ever do on YouTube. It's all for free. All I ask is you give me a thumbs up and check out my other free courses. I have many of them. So what to expect from this course? Well, this is lesson one. This is the introduction where I cover what's going to be in the course and cover the real basics of year-end accounts, such as what year-end accounts are, why we need year-end accounts, and other useful but basic information. Lesson two, which will be the next video, we will dive into the bookkeeping. That's where we need to start when preparing financial accounts we need to start with the bookkeeping. So in that lesson, I'll talk about double entry bookkeeping, debits and credits, records you need to keep, how to keep accurate records, and I'll cover a lot of the basics to do with bookkeeping. Lesson three, corrections. So this is where things get interesting. I will teach you the common mistakes to look out for and how to correct them. There's generally lots of corrections that need to be done. Even if you did the bookkeeping yourself, there may have been mistakes along the way, little errors, and I'll show you how to correct those errors. Reconciliations will be lesson four, which accounts need to be reconciled and how to reconcile them. Lesson five, depreciation. It gets really exciting now, depreciation. So how to, how to depreciate assets, more specifically, Fixed assets like motor vehicles, equipment, those sort of things. Lesson six, accruals and prepayments. I recently just did a accruals and prepayments course. I think it might have been the course before this one. Um, and I'll give you a link to that and go through accruals and prepayments, which expenses typically have some sort of accrual or prepayment. I will lead you by the hand. That's the first six lessons. Hopefully I'm giving this justice and hopefully you're uh, as excited as me. Lesson seven, stock adjustments. Not all financial accounts need stock adjustments, but if the entity holds stock and if it sells products, there will be stock adjustments that need to be done. Lesson eight, the profit and loss account. That's not the profit and loss statement. This is the profit and loss account. So this is where we keep track of dividends, retained earnings, and the accumulated profit or loss for the entity. Lesson nine, retained earnings. So we'll dive into that in a bit more detail. Lesson 10, year end journals. So all these things that we'll be doing to the accounts really from lesson five onward will need to be journaled into the accounts and I'll show you how to do that in lesson 10. Lesson 11, 
The PL, that's the profit and loss statement. I'll show you how to compile that and how it's useful, why we need to do it, how to lay out a standard profit and loss statement. Sometimes that's called the statement of comprehensive income. Lesson 12, the balance sheet or statement of financial position, if you're used to that terminology. Once again, I'll show you how to compile that statement and how we can read it and use it. Lesson 13, I'll then go through tax returns and talk about tax in a bit bit of detail. There will be a lesson 14. I didn't want to end on lesson 13. It's an unlucky number is 13. So there will be a lesson 14 where I will just summarize everything and perhaps cover just a couple of minor points that weren't covered in previous lessons. So prepare yourselves for a 14 video series. I hope I'm not putting you off. Please do not dread doing 14 videos. Please bear with it. You will learn so much. And the videos will be quite brief, just like this one. And if you need more details, if you want to dive into, say, accruals and prepayments or depreciations or bookkeeping in more detail, I will provide the links for those things. Something to mention, disclaimer. I had to do this in small writing, otherwise it didn't feel like a disclaimer. So a disclaimer before we start. This course is not designed to replace a qualified or chartered accountant. You can learn a lot from this course, but I have to give this disclaimer that this is not a tax course. I'm not teaching you how to calculate and file your tax return. Everything covered in this course, as you apply it, please seek advice from a tax professional. Okay, so let's start off with the real basics here. What are year-end accounts? Sometimes they're called company accounts. Sometimes they're called financial statements. Sometimes they're called year-end financial statements. Well, let's read what it says here. It says year-end accounts detail an entity's, an entity being a business, a company, perhaps even a charity. It's some sort of entity that has financial transactions, some sort of organization that has financial transactions. And it could be that you're interested in year-end accounts for sole traders or limited companies. It doesn't really matter. This course is applicable to all entities that need to prepare year-end accounts. So year-end accounts detail an entity's sales, expenses, profit or loss, if the entity is making a loss, assets, liabilities, and equity for the financial year of an entity. They cover the period from the start of a financial year to the end. So entities generally have a financial year. It's a 12 month year, just like the calendar year or the tax year. And it can be different for each entity. So I have an example here of a year ending 31st December, 2020, whatever. If that is the case, then the financial year will run from the 1st of January 2024 to the 31st of December 2024, 1st of January 2025 to 31st of December 2025, and so on. So it's generally a 12-month period, and the year-end accounts will cover that whole period, that whole 12 months. So once again, another example, if the year-end is 31st of March, then the financial accounts will cover 1st of April to 31st of March, a 12-month period. Any questions, let me know below. Why are financial accounts needed? Why are year-end accounts needed? First of all, for tax. We all love a bit of tax, don't we? No. But they are needed for tax reasons for filing tax returns for calculating the amount of tax that's owed it is essential it is vital it's a must that an entity has 
year-end accounts for tax purposes. Business management and financial planning. So if you're looking to grow a business, if you're looking to make a business profitable or more profitable or see if a business is growing or not, if you want to see if a, a business owns more than it owes and there could be lots of things I could demonstrate here to give examples for business management and financial planning but those figures are needed those statements are needed for all these things they are really the primary documents for business management and financial planning they're also the primary documents for lenders and investors so someone looking to invest in your business or company or your client's business or company will want to see the financial statements. The same with lenders. So if the entity is looking to get a bank loan, something like that, the bank will want to see the financial statements. And there are lots of other reasons too. These are the main reasons. Let's move on to the last slide. So who can compile financial statements? Generally, it's accountants. And included in that are CPAs, if you're in the US, tax accountants, chartered accountants. So most entities will approach some sort of accountant to prepare their year-end accounts. But accountants are not the only ones that compile financial statements and year-end accounts. Bookkeepers. So if it's a very small business, then perhaps a bookkeeper can do it for you. So you don't have to always use an accountant a bookkeeper may be qualified and experienced enough to prepare the year-end accounts and also help with the tax side of things. Once again, going back to that disclaimer, please use a tax professional. In-house. So sometimes year-end accounts are actually compiled in-house. A member of the accounting department or finance department may compile the year-end accounts. Business owners, some business owners prepare their own year-end accounts. Okay, that brings us to the end of lesson one. I told you this would be brief. The videos may be longer as this series goes on. I strongly suggest you watch this course from my website. The videos are still on YouTube, but there's a lot more content if you watch from my website. So go to freebookkeepingaccounting.com go to free stuff, scroll down. I have all these courses that are all for free. No registration required. Here we go. Year-end accounts, sole traders, limited companies. It doesn't matter which one you click on. You'll be taken to the course that you're currently doing. Lesson one, look. So there is other material here which can be helpful as you watch these videos. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up. Ask me any questions below and I'll speak to you in the next video.